And Seth, aka Jolly Old Saint, mind your biz, and you're watching the Mind Your Biz channel. Today we've got uh, it's a very special Christmas episode, so I'm going to be you know doing the things, uh, going to be theming it up, as it were. Uh, well, looking like this. But let's jump straight into the news. Let me see if I got. Mm, no, I don't quite have everything set up there the way it should be. Let me make sure we have the Fear and Greed Index current score of 26. So we have brought the fear and greed back into sort of the shape that I think I was expecting. I don't know if you were expecting it to be about like this before, but this makes more sense to me, right? Current market conditions, things being the way they are, spending being the way that it is, makes a whole lot more sense that people will be fearful and uh, not so much greedy as they were last week, right? Score of 30 from before. Proof of live stream. Let me go ahead and read off some of your comments really fast. We got Gandalf Gray saying, pump for this, stoked to boot to be at work for one of these smash the likes that's phenomenal advice right there go ahead and smash those likes make sure that you're sharing this out to anybody who needs to know more about cryptocurrencies i see that there's a little bit of instability in the signal i apologize for that try to stabilize it over the next little while i think that audio should be coming through nice and clear but since you're here go ahead and hit that thumbs up make sure that you share this out to all of your favorite social media platforms and that especially we hit up reddit and twitter there we go I've got my hand behind behind the mask. Ooh, <laughs> I'm messing it up. But Reddit and Twitter, those are our two top targets for sharing out this link. You can share it over on LinkedIn as well if you'd like. Every click counts. Before we jump into anything that resembles uh, any kind of financial advice, just be aware that none of this is intended as financial advice. It's literally basic education on how to look at charts, the fact that we're even looking at charts at all, and realistically, it's a lot more entertaining than it is educational. Let's just be very, very clear. I have a guy wearing a weird Santa filter on his face talking about the fear and greed index and looking at things like crypto bubbles, right? So don't get it twisted. I am not your financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. You got to make your own decisions and you got to face the consequences on your own. Take a look at the one week performance chart here on crypto bubbles it's a bloodbath been very very rough week we've seen that retracement in most price charts across most assets and that's in large part why i think that the fear and greed index has moved more towards fear than it has towards greed and um yeah not too big a shock in my opinion for us to see things kind of moving in that direction um let me uh, also just for the record Note that the current gas prices on Ethereum are not a, a factor, not a limiting factor on the uh, on the current the current market fees. Right, the transfer fee is forty three cents, and current contract fee is significantly lower than usual. So, yeah, the uh, gas fees should not have any kind of effect on the current pricing or market sentiment. It's it just is what it is. It's entirely other issues that are causing uh, a bit of that, that problem with, uh, well, a bit, of, a bit of that sentiment, I should say, in the markets. So, yeah, it's, if it's cost about a dollar thirty three to send most smart contracts or send most tokens across a smart contract or to mint an NFT, I don't think that's why people are feeling fearful. Looks like my stream is a little bit too choppy for my taste. I'm going to make some changes to my VPN and I'm going to jump right back in. So, prepare for an interruption. I think we're going to see a little bit of an interruption on our stream. So let me see if I can make that change and help things run a little bit faster. Okay, fingers crossed, right? We're hoping for a Christmas miracle. Okay, and let's just be absolutely sure that we're able to make it back. I think that we made it back. Looking pretty good, right? So I'm not too... Um, I don't think we... Caused too much damage right there. So thank you for being patient with me while I fix that little bit of the, the streaming glitch. Going to reset my content windows again. Make sure that we see this the way it's supposed to be. There it is, exactly as expected. But yeah, current median transfer fee is not that bad on Ethereum. So I don't think it's the gas fees that are causing any kind of issue. Let's take a look at what to mine, figure out what is actually profitable to mine on right now. This is also just part of the matrix of decision-making inputs that we might all have to use to figure out whether or not we're excited about cryptocurrency right now, or we're feeling kind of bearish about cryptocurrency right now. So let's take a quick look at this. looks like the 4090 is still top of the stack over revenue for 24 hours. I've currently got it set to 10 cent per kilowatt hour power. Let's bring that all the way down to eight cents per kilowatt hour power. 
that ought to help us figure out if there's actually any profit. And it's about like the last time that we uh, looked at any of these uh, any of these cards. The last time we looked at them, very similar story. Thirty three cents on the daily for an RTX forty ninety. This is not good pricing. This is not good profit for what it is that you're trying to do with GPU mining. Gandalf Gray says, we're back. Thank you so much for sticking with the stream. Even while there's been a little bit of system instability, thank you so much for sharing this with other people. Um, I hope that this Santa Claus mask isn't too distracting for you. Um, we can go ahead and just remove that if we need to and keep things very, very simple instead. In fact, why don't we go ahead and do this? So why don't I uh, see if I can get the... Uh, where where are you oh man do i really not have that filter anymore right now looks like i've got that there you go i've got the ethereum eyes that's really creepy especially when we're doing sort of a holiday themed stream let me jump back into something a little more cheerful there we go that ought to do it yeah that's not bad right okay so back at it again uh look at our uh, look at our lineup of gpus and yeah it's really not the worst right i mean not not the worst options, but not the best profit. It looks like the profit line stops uh, right at the RTX A4000. No longer profitable at that point. The RTX 3060 Ti is the only one that's kind of slightly in the profit. Still at the $400 mark for that GPU. And it kind of replaces the 1060 as the baseline model. I know there are a lot of people, including Linus Tech Tips, who are saying they're not going to buy the 4000 series RTX cards. And you can't blame them, right? NVIDIA has been kind of a pain in the butt to work with, so they've got to do something. The only thing they can do is some kind of a boycott. So take a look at the Brains Insights uh, the insights Calculator. We should have our uh, not daily mining. No, let's go ahead and see if we can get the right one. Cost of mine. This is the calculator we're looking for. Pretty straightforward, right? So cost of mine right now, 24,000 USD. Um, if, we, uh, if we don't make some adjustments, and it looks like, it's not even letting us make adjustments. What is going on here? So unfortunately, it's not giving us too much to work with on the uh, the brains calculator. But they change this product every couple of weeks, which I guess is good and bad. They change it so it's supposed to be more usable. But unfortunately, it winds up usually not being any more usable. It winds up actually being a little bit harder to use, unfortunately. Raven Boy Crypto's in the chat says, yo, fam, happy holidays. That's right. It's uh, Crypto Santa here to uh, talk about all things markets i guess so we'll talk talk a little bit about our portfolios as well and we'll go into some of the news let me make sure that i've got this logged in looks like a lot of my stuff decided to just log out when i wasn't looking and that is kind of the the risk of running a show like this is things kind of drift when you're not looking so take a look at our portfolios go to the full all portfolios view i really love using coin gecko for this purpose it's not the best tool um, as far as portfolio management but it's an extremely usable tool you very extremely useful tool so that's why we keep using it for the show but currently under all portfolios let's we'll skip past here over to gpu mineable coins casp is still at the top of the list but it is a false sort of a false positive for profitability it's the biggest loser too right so we got ethereum w ethereum classic also big loser for this week unfortunately 17 percent down at 15 dollars per coin I, it's best days potentially behind it when we saw those really high numbers per coin on ethereum classic hope you didn't uh, marry your bags there great network great team i should say of people working on it but not the strongest fundamentals anymore because it looks like the market is not following the hash rate over to ethereum classic we're not seeing a whole lot of DeFi projects say like yeah you know that makes sense we should go over there where there's proof of work supporting this uh this network i wish it, that that were the case but it's just not um looks like oh my gosh it always does this Okay, uh, we need to go back to the all portfolios view. Unfortunately, using the manual navigation with a trackpad causes problems because it tells my browser to jump back a page. It actually navigates when I'm trying to just show you a portfolio. It's a little bit problematic, but let's uh, jump back into this view again, make sure that we don't cause any problems. But you see the list here, the biggest winner is Gemlink, Grin, and Zano. Zano is up significantly, possibly after their appearance or Crypto Zoidberg's appearance with me on Monero Talk. That is probably bringing some unexpected whale money into their project. So good for you guys if you have some Zano bags. Filecoin is the biggest loser on hard drive, drive mineable coins. The biggest winner is Signum and then Safe coin. I really wouldn't have expected Signum to come up the way that it did. 
But if we look at its market cap, it's still only about four and a half million dollars total. So there's not all that much liquidity flowing through this project such that you could just like, you know, somehow make your money back by getting your hard drives focusing on it. Raven Boy Crypto says, I picked up a Bitmain T17 for 400 bucks. This thing is awesome. As I understand it, the 17 series are kind of hit and miss. That's just what's been uh, communicated to me by, by ASIC brokers. So you either get a really good one that's a workhorse or you get some that are just like falling apart at the seams. And it's hard to know what you're going to get with the T17 and the S17 lineup of Bitmain ASICs. But I'm glad yours worked out well. I know that there's still aftermarket firmware available for the 17 series from Bitmain. So I hope you're getting the most hash rate. Sorry, <laughs> hash rate you can out of it. <laughs> I'm Yeah, I'm going to really play up the fact that I'm wearing a Santa mask right now. Speaking of which, probably time to jump into the other one. I really like the, the physics on this one. See that? See how it, just, it moves? The mustache moves with up and down movement. And then the beard moves with lateral movement. It's pretty amazing stuff, man. We're living in the future, literally, right now. At this moment, this is literally tomorrow already. But moving on to the rest of our content here, that's uh, hard drive mineable coins, CPU mineable coins. Let's go ahead and sort this again from top to bottom. Yenten, Raptorium, Epic Cash are our biggest losers, but they're not taking nearly as big a hit as some of the other categories, right? Biggest winners are Wow Narrow and Veris Coin, but eh, but they're not gaining as much as some of the other other categories either. A lot less volatility in CPU mining, it seems. It's kind of leveled out, probably because of the potential for there being bot farm abuse and other kinds of, you know, zombie farm abuse that takes place there. I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to like try to claim that any of these networks is definitely running any kind of botnets. I don't think that that's a fair claim to uh, to bring into the conversation, but but it is more possible with CPUs than it is with ASICs or than it is with GPUs, right? Let's just be very, very clear about that. There's no, there's virtually zero risk of having massive widespread bot farms of ASICs. Just not how it's going to work. So yeah, Epic Cash, speaking of which, what do you think about me potentially bringing Epic Cash back onto my channel for a follow-up interview? It's been a number of years. And the original interview that I did with the Epic Cash founding team was requested for removal by their team. They no longer wanted to have any kind of public interview media. Should I do a follow-up? Tell me in the comments of this video, I would love to cover, of course, a privacy-oriented project. And if projects are actively building, I want to reward them for that good behavior. So you tell me, mind your risk community, if you want to see more of that, you know it's what I love to do. You know it's why I continued this channel after I started to see some virality, was talking to real serious builders. ASIC mineable coins. Let's also sort the seven-day Bitcoin, Eaton Dust, Dogecoin on discount. Didn't think we'd see it on discount. It's had a recent rally as well. Current market cap at over $10 billion. So Dogecoin, Dogecoin is not hurting per se, but it is down on the weekly. And then the biggest winners are Grin, Pirate Chain. That's about it. Pirate Chain leveled off, but Grin 20% up in a week. FPGA mineable coins. Take a look at the seven day 0x Bitcoin. Uh, eating it. Digibyte on the way up, almost 4% up. Great. Love to see that. Proof of stake smart contracts also over the seven day. Biggest loser is Terra Classic. I mean, shouldn't be too big a shock. Zill, and then Phantom, and then biggest winners. Um, really just Tron. Nothing else is up on the weekly. Everything else is in the red by a significant margin. Even Cosmos is down by 7%. Our junk drawer portfolio, let's quickly get through this as well. We have to, uh, we can look at the, the 24 hour, but I prefer the seven day to play this a long game. And Gold Retriever is down below a dollar. Oh, man, down below a buck. But, you know, I did do that video on the fundamentals of what Gold Retriever is and what it does. Just talking about uh, the, the basics of that project. And based on what I saw, I'm not too worried about it finding its use case. It had, seems to have a pretty strong community as well. So hopefully that just continues. Thank you again in advance for hitting that thumbs up, sharing the link while we're live, making sure you're subscribed with all notifications turned on. All those clicks count. And guess what? Mind your biz fam. Let me jump out of this ridiculous costume right now and just you know talk to you face to face. Your support of the new home for Mind Your Biz has helped us so much. And I can't share with you my dashboard that goes against the YouTube terms of service, but I can tell you that we have strong reason to believe that everything that you've done to support the channel and our, our switch to this new, this new home has helped us out a lot. 
Thank you for that support. We're going to make it is what I'm saying. So I'm actively moving or migrating a lot of our content from the original channel, editing it into a more tactical format, and then bringing it over to this channel, including our, uh, our original series of training videos for Hive OS. We're either going to totally reshoot them or we're just going to edit them and bring them over here. So thank you for your support. It's helped out so much. Seriously, I could not have done this without you. So really appreciate that support. It's, uh, it's made a world of difference uh, in making this change. So anyway, go back into full Santa mode and uh, jump back into our portfolios. The junk drawer, this is where we got Hadron uh, uh, DYP. Man, they completely, yeah, that used to be decentralized yield protocol. It completely made a change there. I don't even know how that, that happened. Serum is taking a beating because, of, of course, it's, Proximity to Solana and then Everdome is down, right? So it was an unfortunately, it was a sucker's rally with that Everdome uh, token. And then all the way down to the bottom of the list, which is our biggest winners, it's Bone, Saitama, and Thorchain, just not losing as much. IBC gang, similar story. There's a lot of carnage over there. Comdex is down, Sentinel is down, Terra Luna Classic is down, and I don't know what that means for them moving forward, right? Uh, Comdex is at only a market cap of $9 million not looking too promising but if you're a strong believer in their mission and vision then you could view it as a view it as a fire sale view it as potentially finding bottom support who knows maybe it does bounce back i don't want to make any predictions there though that's uh it's way outside of my wheelhouse um but biggest winner is thorchain which is just the least worst loser and then akash network ahead of cosmos hub at only five percent down 10 set gems you know i got my heart set on these don't know that we're going to see it pan out right now. Everything is down, though. We're going to take a look at that Bitcoin chart. I'm going to show you the correlation between all these assets and Bitcoin in just a minute. But remember how we were looking at that channel and I said, you know, three formations, maybe we see a breakout. Well, we did see that breakout, but we saw the breakout to the downside. Um, so I'm starting to feel a lot more confident in that channel, in that uh, in that sort of that fractal, giving us some kind of an indication of movement. But, you know, and so I am talking about technical analysis just a little bit right now. But uh, but it's it's just that it's a little bit of confidence in it making some kind of a one move up or down, not in telling us for sure that it is going to go down or up. Um, so just be aware of that. I'm not saying that I think that technical analysis is like awesome. Gandalf Gray asks Ravenboy Crypto, I got a What's Miner 30S plus plus for 3K. Ooh, oh my gosh, guys, please don't pay thousands of dollars for miners right now. Do what you can to avoid that. Not that you can't make it back. It's just that it's a lot harder now than under other conditions. And uh, Raven Boy Crypto, do hit me up on Discord about where you sourced some of those ASICs. I'm very curious about that because I, uh, I've got an idea for a just winter content, some fun content, a project we can do at home. Um, so let me know. Stables, we're not going to take a look at here. We might see those over on DeFi Llama. GPU ETH replacements, we kind of looked at over in GPU mining coins. And it's the usual suspects here with... Um, yeah, no, no other crazy additions or subtractions. It's just Zano that's in the money right now. The RH ecosystem, anything made by one Senor Richard Hart. Um, it looks like everything's in the red there as well. PulsePad, Pulse Doge, and Cult Dow, which were normally the market leaders in that category of coins, they're down too. And then the Doge chain ecosystem has some coins that are in the green on the on the 24 hour but on the weekly it's pretty much only meta doge so yeah not a whole lot going on that that should be encouraging as far as token prices and crypto prices there thank you for tuning in right now while we're paying attention to our portfolios we've been tracking these portfolios for well over a year well over two years if you're paying attention and the reason that we do this is because if we're not paying attention to what these coins and tokens do, then we miss out on opportunities to right size our portfolios or to maximize our profits over time. I mean, some people say all you should ever do is mine and hodl. And I disagree. If you're just a little bit intelligent with your uh, portfolio management, you can just do better just a little bit. And I'm, I'm not talking about high frequency trading. I'm talking about just the investor's mindset of getting out of certain assets and getting into other assets that are just performing better or have better prospects for performance over a given quarter or year, right? You don't even have to be high frequency about the way you trade, but just smart about whether or not you hold things as a dive, nosedive all the way to the ground. So anyway, I, I do like, this is a fun, this is a really, really fun uh, filter, isn't it? So 
Yeah. Oh, Gandalf Gray says if it was possible to get one of those for less from a reputable source, would have gotten it. Hey, I hear you there. It can be really tough to find the best sources for, uh, yeah, for getting equipment. Let me jump back in and see, speaking of our Bitcoin chart, here's our Bitcoin chart, hit the, uh, the infamous chopsticks. And again, as mentioned, said we should be expecting a breakout on the one to third bounce ish. And we sort of did bounce. So I guess that's technically a fourth one, one, two. Yeah, it's a weird looking formation. That's the thing. And I'm not a technician. And the name of this stream was about technical analysis versus fundament fundamental analysis. And I think that fundamental analysis when it comes to markets like this, when we're looking close to bottom support, it is the thing that matters because you need to figure out and ask yourself the question, what will be around in the next year or two that I can rely on to have positive price appreciation when it comes back? Because everything's going to take a hit. Everything's going to be correlated to Bitcoin. Everything's going to have these big red and candle days on, on occasion. And it could be, yeah, we do see another rally here before Bitcoin totally breaks down. But it broke down again and failed to uh, ratchet itself all the way back up to that $20,000 support that some people were sure we were going to see. They just knew we were going to see $20,000 Bitcoin. We'd never seen any lower than that. I mean, including some mining channels. They told you you'd never see lower than $24,000 Bitcoin. They were dead wrong. Um, we just need to be aware of that, right? Be careful who you listen to by way of by, by way of some of this analysis. Um, and of course, do your own research, right? That's the big thing. This is your decision to make about what you think these uh, prices are going to do, what these charts are going to do. But from what I'm looking at, it just kind of looks like, yeah, we, we've got potentially more to go if we are going to see that value buy range. And I suspect we are. But we don't know when that's going to happen. And we don't know how long it's going to be sustained if it wicks into that area. Um, versus finding proper support in that area. So I'm not going to pretend to be that guy. Um, I just, it, just technical analysis is not going to be that thing that I become an expert in. I maybe just learn a few new tricks and I try to share them with you as I go. Looks like our current chat says Paul D is first. I did a first. He's here. It's, it's undeniable that Paul D is first in the live stream chat. And let's see. We're doing some ASIC talk in the live stream chat. Definitely appreciate seeing that. It's lovely to see that people are still focused on mining, right? And proof of work. That's why you come here, guys. You come to mine your biz to learn about 360 degree view of the markets, but also proof of work mining. We take it seriously here because proof of work is the backbone of the crypto ecosystem. It was the first consensus model for coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum and well, and Litecoin, other alts early on. And it remains the most secure version of consensus, a blockchain consensus. And there hasn't been a credible, uh, credible alternative to it just yet. We don't have the same track record on any other type. But let's get into the news. Democratic uh, Political Action Committee to return $3 million of FTX's political donations. This is huge. They say they're returning tainted money. Now, uh, kind of the issue with this is that a lot more than $3 million was donated by FTX to uh, PACs on the left, right, or PACs that are, that are being run by the DNC or that are affiliated with the DNC. And it's claimed that there are more of those donations that have been sent to the RNC and to PACs associated with the Republican, uh, the Republican Party in the United States. But then Sam Bankman-Fried himself has said, well, we didn't keep those on book because it would be really bad optically. They're really bad optics for our company to do that, to, to donate to the right when our public political leaning is to the left. And I think that actually he's just making it up. I think that he's just saying that there were donations to the right but they don't have any kind of proof of that. So these guys are on the hook for returning some of that money, but I don't think they're returning all of it. Anyway, SBF is notorious for being the second largest donor to the Democratic Party during this year's midterm election cycle. By his own account, he also made donations supporting Republican candidates in roughly equal measure, but kept these under the radar for fear of public backlash. But he has to prove that, right? All the foreign billionaires' donations totaled nearly $40 million. Oof, pretty crazy. Meanwhile, the sister trading desk Alameda Research donated $5 million to Future Forward USA, which spent millions on Joe Biden's 2020 presidential bid. So it is pretty obvious that there are some, yeah, there's some direct tie-ins to that. Binance clawbacks. Politicians aren't the only ones who may have to pay back their ill-gotten gains from FTX. Binance received $2 billion from the company when exiting its FTX equity position last year may also face clawbacks during the bankruptcy process. Now it will, I can just tell you right now, it will face the prospect of clawbacks, but um, that 
It, it, it's unlikely, in my opinion, I and mean, I'm not, no expert on this. I just, my armchair opinion is, I don't think they're going to get money back from Binance because they also traded value for value. Now, some of these other groups where there were donations being given to them, yeah, they can likely get that those funds clawed back because they didn't use them for any business purpose and they didn't exchange value for those funds. So I think it's weird that it's even being brought up here. Uh, political bent much? Anyway, Uniswap is going to allow users to buy cryptocurrencies using debit and credit cards. This is kind of a big deal. I mean, they do need partnerships. So yeah, there you go. It is MoonPay and MoonPay also lets you do this over on OpenSea. This is not any kind of a new trick that has been, uh, that's been invented by Uniswap. They, they haven't created anything new, no new portals, no new liquidity. It's literally just MoonPay being added to the Uniswap front end that they host. So is it good for crypto? Is it bad for crypto? You tell me in the chat. Let's see, uh, Ravenboy Crypto sounds off on the hash rate of the Antminer T17, says it's 25-ish terahash, could be 48 to 60-ish, depending on the model. And do, do, do. Paul D says, does the I gave Republicans money to thing pass the smell test for you? Never mind, I already answered it. Um, I'm not sure donating to Republicans would adversely affect, affect SBF's public image much at this point in many quarters. You're right. I mean, man. He's, he's, he's already dug his own grave more than six feet deep. But there's not much more he could do. Gandalf Gray says, mind your business, the whole thing stinks of purchase political influence, in my opinion. I don't think any of the investors ever even cared about crypto. That would explain the lack of due diligence. Yeah, I think you're right. There's a lot that was done wrong there. But uh, tell me in the chat, what do you think of MoonPay being added to Uniswap? Are you likely to use MoonPay? Just because it's on Uniswap, or are you just going to use MoonPay to get crypto regardless, right? Or you can use some other format, some other form of getting onboarded into cryptocurrencies, such as a crypto ATM. I know which one I would prefer. I know which one does disassociates me from my credit card and my debit card address, but maybe you have a different answer. Let me know in the comments. I want to know. The Daily Hodl comes back with the veteran crypto hedge fund manager, um, and they manage over four and a half billion dollars saying DeFi is superior. Here's why a seasoned crypto hedge fund with four point five billion dollars worth of assets under management is asserting the superiority superiority of decentralized finance ecosystems. Dan Moorhead of Pantera Capital said it's head and shoulders above centralized finance due to transparency and rock solid foundations. You can't see my hands rock solid foundations. And you know what? You know, I believe he's right. Um, Dan Moorhead's onto something there. Frankly, if more people were engaged in DeFi as opposed to centralized platforms like Celsius and FTX, we wouldn't have the problems that we're having right now with the credit crunch, with the so-called liquidity contagion that's been happening in cryptocurrency, the cryptocurrency ecosystem. We wouldn't have a lot of the problems that we're, that we're facing currently. And I think that the public image of cryptocurrency would be vastly improved if more people were benefiting through that decentralized, not only finance, but holding, sovereign holding of cryptocurrencies, we could tell a much better, much better narrative together if we were all doing it. So I think he's right. Um, and some of the quotes here are that DeFi, unlike opaque centralized finance, is not an empty house of cards. Its foundations are rock solid, rooted in immutable code and totally transparent. In some cases, DeFi removes su human subjectivity entirely from financing decisions. Yeah, no, not not wrong. Take a look at our, I think our last bit of news for tonight. And uh, we are going to talk a little bit about SBF. Apparently he accepted some kind of a plea bargain deal or some, something's going on. I don't know if there's a plea bargain. I need to be really careful about what I say here, but accepted some kind of a deal that required him to accept extradition. I don't think it's a plea bargain. I need to walk that back entirely. Um, there's nothing about uh, him actually admitting any kind of guilt or or talking about the specifics of the FTX case, just that he's willing to be extradited to the United States because apparently these Bahamian prisons are really uncomfortable. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yep. But uh, there is apparently something of a, a an air quotes deadlock. I don't know, man. I don't I don't really want to be a part of some of the drama that's taking place here. Like I I've been trying to avoid talking about FTX and about uh, Sam Bankman Fried on this channel since all this stuff started brewing. Like I get it. There are 
I mean, there, there's a lot to talk about and it does get clicks. It gets, it gets views on YouTube, but I hate cheap clicks. I hate cheap views. I hate the stuff that is, uh, he says wearing a, you know, a Snapchat filter. <laughs> I, I hate talking about people. If we can avoid talking about people, I'd rather talk about tech and, and ideas if we can. But apparently, he could be extradited to the U.S. as early as this week. Ooh. According to the New York Times report, he told the court in Bahamas Monday he was ready to waive his right to, to fight extradition to the U.S., where apparently he is facing a bunch of charges. The hearing, which took less than an hour, was unexpected with SBF's local defense lawyer, Jerome Roberts saying that he had not been informed of the hearing. The court reportedly took a accorded a 15 minute recess to allow Roberts to confer with SBS over his extradition remarks. The lawyer later told the court that his client wanted to see the indictment against him before agreeing to extradition. Due to the mix up, due to a mix up, the judge decided to send SBF back to prison pending a proper hearing. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is crazy. Uh, SPF's legal team asked the judge to release him on a quarter million dollar cash bail in his first arraignment last week. The team also declared that the client would fight extradition to the United States should it be requested. The court, however, denied the request to for bail, and they well they called him a flight risk. And let's just be very very real. He is. If you're as wealthy as Sam Bankman Freed, you have multiple passports from multiple jurisdictions, and it's not that hard as soon as you hop on that plane to get gone for a while, just like to keep yourself gone and uh, be somewhere else around the world, you know, in a, in, a, in a private jet in a matter of 12 hours anywhere in the world. So it's pretty, um, pretty reasonable that they didn't want to grant him bail, I think, if it's serious, if any of these, these charges are serious. So uh, they say it's unclear what led to SBF's change of attitude. A source who asked not to be noted, identified, noted that it was likely because he would be able to get bail, get bail in the U.S. Some believe the SBF would rather be held in the relatively luxurious U.S. correction facilities than in his current Bahamian Corrections Department, which is said to be overcrowded and dirty. Reports circulating the past week described the, uh, the Fox Hill Jail in Nassau, as overcrowded and that he was sharing a small cell with five other individuals. It's no living situation for no type of living being, says a former inmate. Well, okay, I guess so. You tell me, chat, what do you think? Uh, does any of this matter? Will any of this help the victims get their money back? Is there anything about what I've just said about... Um, about SBF's conditions in prison that's going to help you sleep better at night or help anybody you know who is affected by FTX feel better about their insolvency and about the proceedings since that point. I don't think I feel any better about it, but maybe you do. We're going to call it a show right there. I don't have Mrs. I don't have Mama Biz with me tonight. Web3 Mimi is not feeling her best, so... So she's going to sit out of this one, maybe on Thursday night. Maybe if you smash those likes and share this video out, maybe we get to see her back. Before I let you go, though, let's quickly take a look at DeFi Llama. Current DeFi share, market share is going really to, to Ethereum. It's not changing. It's not changing much at all. Um, but we also want to take a look at our, not borrow aggregator, we want to look at our stables. Okay, So you can see on the side overview there, or the side menu that the total market cap for stables is almost $140 billion. So crypto loves stables. It's only growing. It hasn't gotten lower. It's only grown and grown and grown because it's a useful way to have dry powder. But we can tell that the Luna implosion of earlier this year caused serious issues, right? When US, now it's funny they get to retroactively call it USTC, but $18 billion worth of USTC essentially just disappeared. And uh, yeah. We were so close to, to $200 billion worth of stables, but now we're retracing, in fact, lower. So really, it's over the last year we've seen that hyperbolic growth. It's just surreal. Surreal to see it. Right? USDC, only $11 billion, whereas today, USDC, almost a 5x, 4.5x, four, four times, 400%-ish in terms of the number of stables that have gone into, uh, well, circle, USD and to tether respectively, just growing and growing and growing. Let's see. Um, got a couple of other comments coming in. Barry Merritt in the chat saying supposedly other victims have filed criminal charges in the Bahamas against SBF. He may be staying for a while. Uh, yeah, maybe possibly, 
Mary Merrill says, I think SPFs will get SPF will get used to pooping in a bucket. Could be. I don't know. Uh, Gandalf Gray says, I, quite frankly, I'm so tired of hearing about all this. Alex Mashinsky Celsius CZ, it's getting old now too. I am with you. I don't want to talk about these characters. They're interesting. They throw really nice parties when you go to live events because they're always spending investor money on, you know, or sometimes customer money on on uh, boozing up their their future uh, partners. So it, it's in, they're interesting characters, but I don't want to talk about them very much either. Let's get back to fundamental analysis. Let's get back to fundamental reviews. Um, you tell me if you're okay with me doing something with the Epic Cash team and with some other privacy-oriented projects. I want to develop inter. Uh, I want to develop interviews with developers. That's what I was trying to say. I want to interview developers. I want to develop more business with real fundamental projects. And I want to bring better, strong fundamental projects to you on the channel. On that note, I missed an article about Scotty Pippen, right? From the LA Lakers. Scotty Pippen launched an NFT project. It sold out instantly. There was the Trump project that happened since last time we live streamed. It was announced, launched, and sold out in that amount of time. And the secondary market has driven its regular its volume up, its secondary volume up. I'm just gonna say, boys and girls, this NFT scene is not for the faint of heart, and it moves so fast. It's kind of amazing, kind of amazing. Um, and I've been kind of working on some NFT projects in the background. Big one is the Warren Sap official drop. I've been fortunate enough to jump onto that team and work with them on the Warren Sap official drop. We have some other NFL greats who've talked to us since then. I can tell you this much. NFL greats who talked to us since then who they they aren't Tom Brady, right? They um they aren't uh they 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 kind of more fit the profile of a Scottie Pippen versus a Michael Jordan, right? These are people who we might remember who are phenomenal athletes, but you'd have to just know that they're legacy athletes and they want their shot too, right? Like no pun intended. They want their shot at a really good NFT launch. They want their shot at being remembered. They want their shot at having digital collectibles that have their name on it, that offer them royalties. And I'm really humbled to be part of a team that's working on just that for some NFL greats. So um, more on that in the future. But yeah, current stablecoin market cap, it, it's kind of kind of surreal when you look at the, the all-in market cap. I want to check out nftgo.io and show you the current sentiment there also. It's very similar to the crypto fear and greed index, um, but it looks like the blue chip index is on the upswing. So while it's ironically, while the crypto market is down, the NFT market is up. And I don't know if there's a perfect inverse correlation or inverse relationship to these two markets, but it seems like they're kind of one it seems like when there are outflows in the crypto market there are inflows into the nft market so i don't think it's any mistake that the that the trump nft launch and the scotty pippen nft launch took place this last week when we saw such a downturn in the other crypto markets but we saw those projects sell out keep your head on a swivel boys and girls thank you so much for tuning in to this uh this issue this live stream on mind your biz my name is seth mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And uh, I don't always wear a Santa mask, but I probably will for the next couple of days because, you know, tis the season. It's fun. Thank you so much for smashing that like, sharing this link. Well, I know we're almost not live now, but while we're live, it's when it helps the most. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face. Remember to stay private and mind your biz. Now just do the, um, now I do the Santa dancing outro. Mm -mm 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 -mm.